Okay. So, I wasn't planning to make this episode of Outside the Box, but I'm a pretty frustrated camper here. You see, I love Star Wars. I'm not going to go ahead and say I'm the biggest fan ever, know all the lore, read all the books, seen all the movies. Okay, well, I have seen all the movies. Um, But I'm not going to pretend that I am, like, the ultimate Star Wars fan. But what I will say is I love myself a good Star Wars game. And there's quite a few that I've played over the years. From KOTAR, even, um, you know, the uh, Knights of the Old Republic Online. Or whatever, the, the online Star Wars game, the MMO version one that existed for a little while. I played that, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, Rogue Squadron, back in the day. Uh, and The thing is, there's been like 50, 80, 100 plus different Star Wars games. A lot of them pretty bad. Uh, but Battlefront was always one that I could rely on to be pretty high quality. It was essentially Rogue Squadron and Battlefront and KOTAR. Those were kind of my jam growing up for Star Wars games. And as frustrated as I might be that like Battlefront 2 isn't on Switch or isn't planned to come to Switch at this point, I'm just frustrated about Battlefront 2 in general. Now, here's a caveat. Battlefront 2, when it's working properly, and if you can ignore the microtransactions and the loot boxes is a pretty good game. It's probably the best looking Star Wars game ever. Uh, it is, it's got a it, compelling story in the campaign mode. Uh, and I mean, heck, it has a campaign mode. That's just um, amazing. That's like a next, something I didn't expect to happen after the success of the first Battlefront uh, released by EA. Uh, back in 2015, I bought the first Battlefront on Xbox One, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, for what it had. It sucked that I also had to pay $50 for a season pass. And here's the thing. There's no season pass this time. All the content updates are going to be free. Yes, folks, free. Of course, if they're going to give us free content updates, that means that there was going to be another way that they were going to make money off of the game you know, perpetually over time, and that became loot boxes. And it's easy enough to say you can ignore the loot boxes, but you really, really can't. Uh, the moment the game gives you some free loot boxes, uh, it essentially takes over your menu. Uh, so when you're in the menu, uh, you can't ignore that you have new loot boxes. You need to go uh, check them out. And as soon as you check them out, the game starts reminding you about you can get more loot boxes. and You can do this and you can spend money on that and blah, 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 blah. And there's a lot of math out there about the fact that it takes something like 4,000 plus hours to potentially unlock everything in the game if you are not going to spend any money and if you do spend money it's going to cost you like two or three thousand dollars or whatever the case may be and whether or not that math is correct I'm not going to bother to double check it because I'm not going to be bothered to ever unlock everything in a game like Battlefront especially when it's going to take that many hours or that much money or a combination of both what frustrates me the most about this game are the bug reports coming out now i had a chat with some people some of our patrons about this one particular patron i should say on our discord server and they played the game and they actually enjoy you know they played it for a couple hours and they enjoyed it now they got a refund um they obviously were taking advantage of that two hour time limit on steam refunds but or origin refunds i think you have to get this on origin if you got it on pc but my beef is the numerous videos I have seen out there, and even so, from a little bit of personal experience. Now, you know, full disclosure, I don't actually own a copy of Battlefront 2, but I have played Battlefront 2. I played it in beta, and I also uh, have a friend of mine who has a copy, and I played his copy. And, uh, man, this should be a great experience, but it's not. So, here's the th- here's the deal. Me and my friend beat the campaign, and the campaigns. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but there's like no ending to the story. Uh, it just kind of leaves you sitting there, knowing that it needs a free content update in the future to actually finish the story. The story is completely incomplete. Uh, and here's the thing: the campaign itself, the actual story, is pretty good. It's very Star Warsy. And believe it or not, it's canon. 
That was what was exciting about this campaign is that Disney came out and said, this campaign is canon. And this campaign deals with a huge blank space in Star Wars history since they retconned a bunch of the books, you know, after Disney took over. And it, it's, you know, what happened at the end of Return of the Jedi to what happens at the beginning of the new movie, you know, series out there. So there's like that big blank space in there. And this helps fill some of that gap. And it's great. It's a great story. But along the way, no oh man, along the way it's bad. Now we didn't have this hooked up to any video recording because this isn't a Nintendo game, right? I didn't plan to talk about this. I didn't plan to even bring up this game on Nintendo Prime. So the footage you're about to see, uh, I got from numerous different people. Uh, some of the footage from Jim Sterling, I know for a fact some of, we're going to use some of his footage of his Jim Pressions video, but there's other footage out there that I'll probably grab, and I'll have you know links to every YouTuber or, or wherever I get the footage from down in the comments below for you to go check out and, and you know see what they had to say and see their experiences with the game. It's buggy. It's extremely, extremely buggy. Now this, just talking about the campaign mode here, uh... <laughs> Almost every single time we got in a ship to fly, you know, TIE fighters or whatever the case may be, out in outer space, the ship would basically just start, you know, vibrating like crazy. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, it's just jittery, and it's definitely not because we're getting hit by anything, but it's almost like we're constantly being hit by something over and over and over again at the exact same speed every single time. Um, it's extremely annoying. It doesn't necessarily impact... Uh, the ability for us to, you know, maneuver and uh, enjoy uh, taking out other ships. Well, I guess it does affect our enjoyment because we have our ship spazzing out in the middle of the screen the whole time. Uh, there's other bugs where we got stuck in the ceiling. This also happened to Jim Sterling. Uh, and when you're stuck up there, enemies, you know, the rebels like despawn and respawn. It's just really funky. Uh, sometimes our hits wouldn't register. Like it'll say destroy this stuff and you just can't do it. Uh, just really, really, really frustrating experiences, and it's really not that much better in multiplayer either. Uh, a lot of the same bugs happen in multiplayer, and, I mean, it, it's incredibly frustrating that you have this $60 game, or more, because there's obviously, you know, other editions of the game that you could spend more money on, or maybe you spent $60 and then you got the, the $23 starter pack to go with it. Um that just oh man it breaks the multiplayer it, it, it just kicks me out of the game basically it doesn't necessarily kick me out of like the multiplayer match but like the it gets really jittery at times i've fallen through the world um which i understand falling through the world bugs like that happens sometimes but we've had this happen you know uh, 10 plus times at this point over the span of three matches, that right? It only took three matches for us to fall through the world ten times. Um, this game, by all accounts, should be one of the best playing Star Wars games ever. When the game is working, my God, is it fantastic! It is maybe one of the best Star Wars games ever, and you'll get lulled into thinking that, and then you encounter a bug. And then you encounter another bug, and another bug, and another bug. And suddenly, your enjoyment of this story, your enjoyment of all this stuff that feels like it's so awesome in this game is just sucked out of you. This is before we even talk about the microtransactions and the loot boxes thrown in your face, because this game is very, very much built around those loot boxes. But even if you attempt to ignore them, or you try to take advantage of the system to potentially unlock Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker, which, good luck unlocking Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker without spending money. Um, it's... It's just mind-blowing to me uh, that this is what Battlefront 2 has devolved to, especially after the first Battlefront game showed so much promise. And I know, I realize, it's not the very first Battlefront game, but, you know, since they brought Battlefront back with EA. Uh, and this is obviously on the back of EA closing Visceral Studios that was creating a largely single-player, you know, story-based uh, Star Wars game being canceled for what's probably going to end up being another multiplayer Star Wars game. We don't know. Uh, we know that they also just bought Respawn, who's also working on like, a lightsaber game or something. Uh, so there's more Star Wars games to come. 
Uh, this isn't the end of the Star Wars games. But Battlefront was always one of the premier Star Wars games, both for compelling campaigns and insanely fun multiplayer. And it feels like EA has just taken it all away. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, Ew, EA. It's just EA. They do this to everything. No, no, they actually don't do this to everything. Uh, here's the thing. I can almost look past, almost look past the fact that it's built around loot boxes. I can almost look past that. But what I can't look past, what I, what I absolutely cannot deal with, is a broken game. And that's what this is. It's a broken, fundamentally, gameplay-wise, a broken game. And they're going to probably fix it. Give them six months, there'll be a, a zillion patches, and they'll take care of this. But here's the thing. When I played the beta for Battlefront 2, and I played it on PC, these bugs existed then. They're still there in the retail release. People gave feedback. I gave feedback. And it was either ignored, or EA didn't allow them the time to fix the bugs. Last time, they excused the season DLC pass $50 thing. They said the reason that they didn't have all that content already in the game was because they wanted the game to come out around the hype around the new movie, The Force Awakens. And, hey, I get it. That's fine. I, I, it was almost excusable because you're right. Star Wars had kind of been falling out of the mainstream for some time, so you want to take advantage of a massive marketing opportunity. I, I, I hate it, but whatever. At least it was only 100 bucks, and you could basically enjoy the full game. Here, 110 bucks actually, and you can enjoy the full game. But here, that's not the case. It's thousands of dollars to enjoy the full game. Uh, and that's clearly going to make them a hell of a lot more money because there's going to be people because it's Star Wars. It, this thing, this game's going to sell on the premise that it's an amazing looking Star Wars game. That's when it when it's working is one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played. When it's working, until you hit that loot box wall and then you're like, oh come on. But uh, either way, it's still in incredibly fun. That campaign, uh, that campaign could be a movie. That's how good the campaign is. I, outside of the fact that there's no ending. And that sucks. Like, how can you release a campaign that's that good with the story and has no ending? Are you kidding me? No ending? Ugh. But I can believe it because it's EA. And EA isn't always like this because usually EA's games are genuinely decent if you ignore some of the DLC, some of the microtransactions, and the loot box stuff. If you take all of that bad stuff that they're clearly doing to maximize profits and you set that aside, and you just look at the game, genuinely their games are decent. They're good. Battlefield World War I was really, really good. Battlefront was still really, really good gameplay-wise. Um, and I realize those two games are built on the same engine, and you know, obviously you have shared a lot of similarities, and one of the criticisms of the first Battlefront uh, by EA was that it felt like just a, a skinned version of Battlefield. And that's fine, because Battlefield was fantastic, so maybe that's why it didn't bother me. But even, you know, you go back to the Dead Space series that canceled the last Dead Space game, uh, you know, if you eliminate you know, all of the money-making stuff, the base game was still decent. Was it, it was a lot different than the prior Dead Space games, which is probably why it didn't sell as well, but it was still a, a good game. It wasn't buggy and, and just a big mess. I, I play Madden every year. It, it's not buggy and a huge mess. Um, I, pl I play games like, uh, I'm trying to, the Dragon Age series. Uh, it's not buggy and a huge mess at launch. That's my problem, is that this isn't actually normal for EA. If there's one thing I could always trust from EA, even more so than Ubisoft, because uh, Ubisoft was getting a really bad reputation, especially with the Assassin's Creed series, it was that regardless of whatever money-grubbing was in the game, the actual base game was still pretty good. And because of that, I could overlook some of the money-grubbing because, hey, we live in a world where, you know, video games, the base price is still 60 bucks. And it's been 60 bucks for you know way longer than it should have been. Inflation has made that $60 game today that when I bought a $60 game back during the N64 era, um, the fact that games are still only 60 bucks today uh, is kind of ridiculous. So they obviously were going to find new ways to monetize, especially as game budgets have blown up. Um, and whatever, it, I'm not saying that I like microtransactions or loot boxes, especially loot boxes that can affect game balance or have like key characters in a game like... Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker in a Star Wars game locked behind it. Uh, but at least 
I understand at a base level that video games exist to make money. They're a for-profit business, and I can respect that. And while I hate the models currently being used, all I can say is they are the most profitable models currently on the market, so they're going to use them. And there's nothing I say, and there's no amount of games I don't purchase that's going to change that fact. But at least, at least behind, beneath it all, I can always rely on getting at least a good game or a solid game, or a playable game. And in this case, I'm not. Uh, I really want to love Battlefront 2. I really want to buy Battlefront 2. There is, it's taking every you know, amount of my will to not buy Battlefront 2 because I love Star Wars that much. And when the game is working, I'm having so much fun. But I can't do it. I can't do it. This is the first time that EA has done something to a game that makes it so I just I, I can't do it. They went too far. And it's not the, it's not the money grabbing that's the problem this time. They didn't give this game enough testing time to work out key game breaking bugs. I'm sorry, but then again, I'm not sorry. What I who I'm really going to say sorry to is all of the Star Wars fans out there that really wanted this game to be the battlefront game of their dreams regardless of the microtransactions and the, and the loot boxes and whatever the case might be but we're gonna have to wait and i don't know if ea as much as i've trusted them with games in the past if they're capable of making star wars games that they're not going to rush out the door and they're going to allow to be bug free or you know at an acceptable level of bugs at launch and an acceptable level to me is zero game breaking bugs and we're not going to pretend as nintendo fans that we haven't had game breaking bugs hello saving a game in the canon room in twilight princess sorry when you make a save there and it kills your entire save file because you can't get out of the canon room I mean, game making bugs exist. Majora's Mask. I remember uh, if you sa if I saved at the uh, the gold cartridge, and if I saved at the owl statue outside the boss room in Stone Tower Temple, and then when I go to reload my save file, it would be corrupted every single time. So like, let's not pretend that game breaking bugs don't exist in Nintendo games. But it's a little ridiculous in this game. It's over the top, uh, and at least as soon as you learn about those bugs you can just avoid them and not save at those spots you can't avoid these bugs so i hope that if you guys are playing battlefront 2 that uh, you're not experiencing any of this uh and so my experience with the game right now I played it on pc and i played it on an xbox one x uh, I've not played it on a base Xbox One or a base PlayStation 4, or any PlayStation 4 for that matter. So maybe the bugs are a little bit less on the base model and the, and the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't know. I don't have experience. And I hope if you guys are out there playing Battlefront 2 that you haven't come across these same kind of bugs. But, uh, <sighs> damn. This shouldn't have happened. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Ruffin Dance from Nintendo Prime. And if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I will catch you in the next one. Whoa, and as kind of a little post-editing update, it appears that for launch, uh, that Star Wars Battlefront 2 will not have paid microtransactions. Uh, here is what it says on their official Twitter account, which is EA Star Wars. It says, Today we turned off in-game purchases for Star Wars Battlefront 2. The game is built on your input, and it will continue to evolve and grow. Read the full update. And it says, As we approach worldwide launch, it's clear that many of you feel there are still challenges in the design. We've heard the concerns about potentially giving players unfair advantages, and we've heard that this is overshadowing an otherwise great game. <laughs> as long as the bugs are fixed. Uh, this was never our intention. Sorry we didn't get this right. We hear you loud and clear, so we're turning off all in-game purchases. We will now spend more time listening, adjusting, and balancing and tuning. This means that the option to purchase crystals in the game is now offline, and all progression will be earned through gameplay. The ability to purchase crystals in-game will become available at a later date only after we've made changes to the game. We'll share more details as we work through this. And this came from Oscar Gabrielson, general manager at DICE. So, yes, they they are temporarily removing the ability to purchase things and, and buy loot boxes. They're not removing loot boxes from the game. They haven't made any adjustments to how much currency it takes. But they're going to make adjustments. We'll see. Um, they're obviously going to bring back the paid system. That's all I can really say, but I just wanted to be totally transparent before publishing this video and letting people know that, hey, they at least are, DICE is at least acting like they care. 
So we'll see what happens. Now if only they can fix the bugs. Who knows? Yes, by the way, when I did play it on Xbox One X, at least, there, the day one patch was installed. So I'll give you guys a month. I'll give you a month, Dice, to try to get this right. All right, folks. Peace out.